Today we are going to take a look at an AI coding agent that writes the code, installs the needed packages, executes the code, adds new features, and of course tries to self-correct any errors preventing the code from running. It's going to be a deep dive into how I prompted this system to work, and of course we're going to do some testing, so let's just get started. Here you can see a very simplified version of how this works, so basically the user has to set a goal, what kind of app it wants, right? and the coding agent is gonna write that app. It's gonna try to execute this code in the terminal. And if the code uh, is doing some kind of error, we're gonna send that code over to the self-correcting uh, part we have. And it's gonna try to take that error message and self-correct, send it back to the execute uh, code command and try again. And if it works, we're gonna run the code of course. And after that, we're gonna take that code and try to add some new features. And we're going to try to execute it again. Of course, if we get an error again, we're going to send it back here, try to correct it, and retry the corrected improved code. Uh, if there's no errors, we're just going to execute the improved code. So that is very simplified how this works. We're going to dive deeper into the code uh, at the end here. So I think we're just going to head over to the Python code now and start diving into kind of how I prompted this system before we do some testing. Okay, so this part of the video is going to be a bit technical because I'm going to go slowly through how I kind of thought about prompting this system because uh, I needed to adjust a lot of prompts here to make it actually work the way I wanted to. So if you're not so interested in learning how to prompt this kind of systems, you can just skip ahead if you just want to watch how this system performs when I run it. Uh, so I will leave like a timestamp if you want to skip this part. Uh, but let's get started here. So you can see we're just going to go through the main function and when we have some kind of function here, we're going to go up and try to look at them. So, like I said, we're going to set a goal. So, I have a bunch of different goals here we're going to test. So, let's just look at the example here. So, we set the goal to display the stock price of Apple using a free API. So, that's basically a simple goal we give, right? And we have two different system messages. This is because we need one function to... Your task is to remove all text that is not needed to run the Python code. Because when we will try to execute the code, we don't want any uh, other strings or integers involved in the code, right? We only want the part uh, that is executable, right? And the, the first system message is, you're an expert uh, software developer with expertise in Python. Your task is to create creative solutions. So that is kind of the two system messages we will be using. And if we start on the top here, as you can see, we have this initial code. So this is the first code we are going to generate. So uh, we are using an F string here. So you're a super creative expert software dev with expertise in Python. Uh, I'm going to have to scroll over here. So write a Python code to, and then we have uh, this goal here set in like these brackets. And the goal, of course, is the one we set here, right? Uh, and we also want to set our system message here. So let me just fix that. So we're just going to do like this, right? Okay. And then we have the, uh, we pass on the system message. So this is like the, the first system message here, right? So not the special one. And the next part here is going to be to clean up the code a bit. So we're going to use this clean self-correct function. And we're going to feed in the code we wrote here, right? So if you see here, here is kind of the function we have up here. So the clean self-correct function. Again, we use a F string. So we're just going to pass in the code we just created from the initial code here. Right. And your task is to remove all text that is not needed to run the Python code. So this is basically exactly the same as we put in our system message. So for this function, we are using the system message too, right? And that was kind of our special system message here, right? So... I struggle a little bit with that, but after I put in these two, I put the system message to remove all text and I put it this self-corrected prompt here, a clean self-correct code prompt. Um, uh, it works pretty good, to be honest. And the next part again is going to be to clean up the code a bit more. Uh, so we're just going to run this function called clean code. This is just going to remove some, we always get this uh, Python with this, um, yeah, some additional strings here. And we're just going to remove those and replace it with just a white space, right? Uh, if we take a look at the code here, usually we can get this uh, this uh, Python stuff on top here, right? So we're just going to remove those. 
So yeah, that has been working pretty good. Okay, so next then it's just gonna be to print the code and then we're gonna use the find and install dependencies function. So we're gonna pass in the code we just created here and it's gonna look for those import statements and actually try to install with a pip install every single uh, dependencies we need to actually uh, run this code. And then we're just gonna save it to our code path. And yeah, then we're gonna run this execute code with self correction. If you take a look at that, you can see that it is using this execute code function we have up here to actually try to run the code. And if success, we're just gonna return a true. And if we have some issue with the code, then we're gonna go into this part here that is uh, gonna try to self-correct the code. So the first part, we have this self-correct uh, function here. So this takes our code and it's gonna take the error message too. If we go down and take a look at this function here, So this is the self-correct function and we're just gonna do an f string again. So the following Python code has an error and then we uh, pass in our code here and we're gonna pass in the error message that actually comes from the terminal, the syntax errors and please fix the error and provide the corrected code. So that is kind of how we try to correct any error messages we get when we run the code, right? And then it's just gonna continue up here in the execute the code with self-correction function. So it's just gonna clean it again, remove those uh, additional strings. It's gonna print it, it's gonna save it, and it's gonna try to run it again. So you can see we have some kind of max attempts here. So we can set, we can pass in the file path and the max attempts. So if we go down here now, you can see I just set the max attempts to five. So we're gonna type five times uh, to self-correct before we just give up, right? And that was just the first part. So this was to write the code and execute it and self-correct if we have any errors. And then we kind of come into our loop here. So this is gonna be kind of where we add some new features. So we're just gonna do an F string again. So the current Python code is the current code, right? And the current code is just uh, gonna open the file we have saved into our code path. And we're gonna brainstorm three new cool features. And here you can kind of put down whatever you want. So I just put down like colors, UI, animation, styling improvements to add to the Python code above. So that was kind of the prompt I used here. And we're gonna print the new feature we want to implement. So we're just gonna do an F string again and just paste in the new features from the uh, what OpenAI or our LLM returns here. And then we're gonna run a variable called updated code. So this is just gonna pass an F string again to OpenAI. Uh, so it's just going to be cur current Python code. So we're going to feed in the code here and it's going to do features to add. So it's going to list up the features we want to add and add the new cool features to the Python code and write the new full updated code. And then we kind of go into the same loop, right? We're going to remove all the text. We're going to clean it. We're going to print it. We're going to install all the dependencies. And yeah, we are back into kind of the loop where we try to run it again. So <laughs> I know this was quite a lot, but... Uh, uh, I spent some time trying to prompt this correctly. I was very happy how it turned out actually. Uh, I initially had this, um, the other part of this system where I used a screenshot of the app running and tried to feed back some information from the, um, the vision model that we used. Um, I kind of took it out because it didn't work so good. I might implement that uh, later, right? Uh, but I hope this wasn't too bad to follow along. Uh, if, if it was too bad, maybe I can do some separate video if people want to know actually more about this. But uh, yeah, that is how this works. It's not that complicated. The only thing I had to work on was, of course, try to figure out what kind of prompts I should use here. Uh, but yeah, like I said, very happy how it turned out. So I just think we're going to do some testing now and actually see how this works in practice, right? But first, let me just quickly plug my membership. So if you join as a member here on YouTube, you will get access to the GitHub community where I upload all my codes. You will also get access to the community GitHub. And if you join today, if you decide to become a member, you can actually join the giveaway we are running where I give away some Nvidia merch. So we have this t-shirt here. We have some stickers for your laptop. We have this very cool coffee mug here. And we also have this socks. So if you become a member today, you can actually join the giveaway. It's too, not too late yet. So yeah, see you there, hopefully. But now let's actually do some testing here. So I just want to show you quickly, like this is uh, a PowerShell terminal I created with this system. So it kind of shows uh, 
the Bitcoin price, so it updates every 30 seconds. It shows kind of, I have like 0.2 Bitcoin, so it shows kind of what my value is in NOC, and it shows if I have lost or gained any money over the last 24 hours. That was a pretty simple PowerShell app I built using this system, so I thought, thought it was pretty cool. So I thought the first goal we're gonna set is just to create a simple snake game. So we're gonna start off using Anthropic's Claude 3 uh, Opus API because it's really good for coding. I've been super happy using it. So I hope we can create a pretty cool snake game using this API. So yeah, I think we're just gonna head over to the terminal here and yeah, let's fire it up. Okay, so this is gonna be the first iteration. So yeah, let's see how good this works now. So, yeah, it seems to be working pretty okay. We Okay, so I crashed. Let's try to play again. Yeah, the score is working. The snake is growing. So, pretty good. Okay, so let's just crash that. Let's quit. And see what kind of um, improvements it wants to suggest here. So, it wants to add some colors to the snake and targets. To kind of change up the colors, I guess. And it wants to add some levels and increasing difficulty. So let's look out for that in the next iteration. Okay, so let's see now. So remember, we are looking for some, was it colors? <coughs> okay, so we have an error here. So unbound local error cannot access a valuable snake speed. So we're going to test uh, the self-correct function now to see if it actually works. That's good. By adding the line global snakes better be in the other run game, you should make it variable accessible. Now the code should run without the unbound local error. Okay, so let's see if it corrects itself here. Yeah, okay, so I'm very happy how that for now I kind of got to show how the self-correcting works here. So let's try it now. You can see we have a level, we have some snake colors here. That's a bit strange, but pretty cool. So let's see if we can get up in level here. So that we have score two. Look at the snake. So how do we get higher level? Okay, so I crash. Let's try again. Okay, so yeah, I got to level two. That means uh, it's sped up. So I guess both the colors and the levels are working. So pretty good. I want to try to quit one more time and see if we get any more improvements to our code here. Okay, so it looks like we have some kind of API connection timeout here or something. I didn't set up any retry functions, so that was a bit stupid. Uh, but I think we gotta call it that for the snake game and move on to our next goal then. And that is gonna be to display the Bitcoin price graph using a free API for Coindesk. I also changed uh, it to Ch ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo, so we can get some more speed on this. Uh, it's much quicker, but I think it's working pretty good. Okay, good. So let's head over to the terminal. Let's clear this and yeah, let's run it. Okay, so this is kind of our first version. So here you can see the Bitcoin price graph. Uh, maybe it's a bit small for you. Let me try to... Yeah, we can do that. And here you can kind of see the price on the left here and we have the date. So yeah, it's been turning quite high lately. So yeah, that was kind of the first iteration. So let's just close that and see if we can get some... Yeah. Uh, implement some improvements. Okay, so here you can see the improvements. It's gonna try to add a grid and style. It's gonna include moving average line and it's gonna add an interactive zooming and panning. Okay, I don't know what that is, but yeah, let's see if it works. Okay, so you can see we got something a bit different here. So if we zoom this a bit out, right, so you can kind of see uh, we have the seven day moving average. So we have kind of have the price in yellow here. And the red part is the seven day moving average. Okay, so that was a bit different. So let's close it again and see if it changes. Okay, so here you can kind of see we got an error here. So tooltip set text F, so interpret it string literal. So detect that line 39. So see if uh, we can try to self correct this and run it again. So this change made the hover function with the corrected, the code should now run without syntax error. So let's see if that's correct. And yeah. You can see that time the self-correct uh, function worked pretty good. So we got the code running now. Uh, I did, don't see a lot of changes here actually, but uh, yeah, uh, at least the self-correct function worked. So I was pretty happy about that. So yeah, I think we're just going to close this now and try to set a, a more different type of goal, right? Okay, so now I wanted to do something in another language. Instead of doing Python, let's try to do something in Go. So try to create an advanced CLI password generator app uh, using Go. So I just changed up everything we had from Python to Go, right? 
So yeah, I'm just gonna uh, try to run this now and see if we can get some cool apps in another language. I found out that I had to change up these install packages a bit because we have to install Go packages, right? So I just changed up that. And uh, now I think we are fine. So let's head over to the terminal and run this now and see if we can get our app. So yeah, you can actually see the flag installed successfully, Matran installed successfully, so it did work. So yeah, we got our password here. Now we're gonna try to uh, implement some colors and some progressive password generation, whatever that is. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so we generate a new password. Uh, so it's running pretty fast here. So color for progress bar, animated password strength meter, okay. So it they went ahead, yeah, that was pretty much the same, wasn't it? Let's run it one more time. Okay, that changed up a bit, but uh, yeah, let's try another project in Go and see if we can do something completely different. Let's try to create a web crawler that scrapes the H2 headlines from the URL theverge.com, so let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we're downloading some packages here, and yeah, that was a lot of installs, but okay. Okay, we got an error, so see if we can correct it. Uh, nope. Let's try again. Yeah, <laughs> it worked in the end. I didn't expect that. So let's take a look here if we... Okay, let's, let's run it a bit more and see what happens. Okay, so that changed the color. <laughs> okay, so we got an error. Trying to fix it. Uh, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna stop it here. And uh, let's see if we, this is actually the headlines from theverge.com. Okay, so the headlines, we have the perfect music streaming app does not exist, witching scan to watch, Sam Altman reloads OpenAI, so let's see here. Uh, yeah, the perfect music streaming app does not exist, witching to scan watch, Sam Altman rejoins OpenAI, so yeah, that worked. Uh, it's not in a good structure, but we got exactly what we asked for, so yeah, I guess it was completed. So I think the last run there really showed off how good this self-corrected code function kind of worked. We tried four attempts and it got it on the four attempt, fourth attempt. So I was pretty happy with that. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a bit heavy kind of on the prompting side, but I kind of wanted to take a video and kind of go slowly through how I think about prompting these systems. Uh, so like I said in the intro, if you want to access this code yourself, just follow the link in the description, become a member of the channel, and you will get access to all of this and the community Discord. So yeah, thank you for tuning in, hope you enjoyed it, and i see you again on Wednesday.